Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Friday, the 9th of April. All right. Now, as we uh, move through the, the back end of the Asian session, very clear uh, understanding of what's happening. Um, you've got the price, uh, the prices of the US Treasury is falling, which means the yield is going up. That supports a stronger dollar, which we're seeing across the board, and the dollar block are falling, right? So really not much connection here with the equity markets. They've sort of uh, nodded off and gone to sleep. But the dollar strength coming from the US Treasury bounce, um, I think also when you have a look at the, the various news, right, there's, and I'll actually, I'll show you the charts first. The, um, you look at this, right, it says that there's pressure on sterling. Now, we know sterling's ha had a different vibe the last couple of months, all around the euphoria around the vaccine rollouts, right? So it's gone up about five or six cents. That, I've been saying this for about a, almost a month. If there's any change in that story, the vaccine story, it's going to like capitulate back down to 130, the figure. Now, what we're seeing is this the, the, the flow on effect from this AstraZeneca, or AstraZeneca, I should say, uh, concerns around the, it's no longer called a vaccine in Australia, it's the uh, uh, pandemic medicine. I think they're calling it here in Australia now because they can't call it a vaccine because it doesn't stop you from catching it. So the um, it's the pre preventative medicine, I think they call it. So anyway, this is like a huge one. Like I could see Sterling dropping two or 300 points on this, they've been pushing this and clapping their hands with joy, saying, yeah, we're awesome, we're gonna be great. Well, you know what? I know in Australia, they've stopped giving it to people under 50 because there's been blood clots and a whole range of issues, especially in women. So don't think that this is a good thing. Think of it as a trader. We're seeing UK weakness. That's gonna also give us a little bit of dollar strength. Now, so you can see Sterling, still, I mean, sorry, Aussie and Kiwi appear to be following the um, sterling. And I'll show you, we had, we had some Chinese numbers out. Before this whole pandemic thing, the Chinese numbers were very closely correlated with the Aussie and Kiwi, obviously, because Australia and New Zealand, China is their biggest export market, right? So we had some massive numbers on inflation in China, suggesting economic growth is picking up dramatically. Um, but things aren't exactly easy to pick here. And I've been saying it all week. It's one of these connection weeks where Everything discombobulates. The Treasury's lost a bit of momentum. They were up, then they were down. Now they're sort of coming back a little bit, as in the yields. Uh, equity markets have been a little bit uncertain as well. So it creates a little bit of tension. Like you can see the dollar, I mean, you've got to put your, your hand on your heart and say, well, this is still going down at the moment, but we are seeing, seeing periods of where it bounces. So dollar yen, a little bit lower. I think I saw something about the BAJ, see scope to set common rules on... CBDCs with major central banks. Now, I don't know what they're, what they're doing there with the, um, we're talking about digital currencies. So that'll work itself out. What we are seeing is a little bit of weird price, or not weird price action, but discombobulated price action here on, on dollar CAD. But the good thing is, right, we've got a, a very clear support trend line here. Let me just clear all those, all that writing. The, um, now this trend line here, I mean, we're, we're dancing around this one. That's pretty much already over. Right, with this trend line going up and down through it, I'd be probably moving that to that level so we don't get sort of pre positioned I should say. I've been busy all day. Um, so, anyway, got a support line here, a bit of a resistance. We do have Canadian employment figures coming out now, dollar Swiss and um, sorry, dollar the dollar index still drifting lower, but we are seeing them rally in the uh, Asian session. It'd be interesting to see if there's any flow on effect here. The big story here to me is sterling. We've got a support level here. Um, I mean, I know it's come down 100 and what, almost 200 points this, this past week. It's got another 200 in one day coming up. I can tell you it's, it's, it's that's where the, the vibe is at the moment. Um, and just looking at Aussie and Kiwi, well, you're really not really clutching at straws, but these things have lost a bit of momentum. There's that still the residual um, hangover of the Kiwi uh, tax on the housing, which is a negative for Kiwi. But uh, my old favourite, if I just get the pen again, my old favourite euro, which I lo would love down at 110, is still banging away up above 118. So what we're seeing is independent things happening across all different currencies. So not only is the US dollar coming alive with the treasury yields, we're seeing... Um, some action on the euro, sterling, uh, Aussie and Kiwi on their own 
uh, government central bank actions, right? So that's why things are a little bit confusing because the major pairs aren't correlating as closely as they usually would. Okay. And when the euro is discombobulating against the others, that's a bit of concern because this is the, the big dollar block pair. And then you've got sterling going down. Uh, look at the price action here this week on Aussie. It's, that's not exactly confident in sterling. So it's to me, I'm sort of waiting to see what the hell happens. The, uh, so coming back to the data, right? This is where we are starting to see some things. And it just goes to show these Chinese numbers, which are really strong, no, uh, no impact at all, right? The currencies have gone down. They usually would go up on that. Um, and, you know, it's little bits and pieces. Like producer, this is the other thing too. I was looking at producer prices, a little bit weaker. Okay, so that's a, uh, that's a like, well, should Euro be lower? I don't know, but everything's looking a little bit weird. Okay, to me. So just keep an eye on the, the, um, the treasury yields. As I said, there are the price is falling a little bit. They're not really going anywhere, but they are. It is enough to give the currencies a bit of momentum through this Asian session. So, coming through the North American session, for me, the major focus has got to be the Canadian employment numbers. Right now, there's a bunch of different data here. There's what there's five different variables. Make sure you're uh, if you are looking at this opportunity, let the numbers come out, see what happens across the board. And if that matches up with a potential opportunity here uh, around these trend lines, well, you might have a trade on, okay? Um, outside of that, because of the discombobulation across the board on the majors, I'm not looking particularly to get too uh, caught up in a, in a trade on a Friday when things haven't been looking great all week anyway. I understand this is a transitional week. We've got uh, next week coming up, hopefully, um, things iron themselves out. We either get some more news around AstraZeneca. If we do, looks like it's going to be negative and sterling about 135. And the rest of the pairs will sort of, will work out where they are afterwards. But nothing really to, to get your teeth into super aggressively, right? And that's primarily because we don't have, we don't have really good trend lines anywhere. I mean, sterling's got a support trend line down here. Um, and that's pretty much it. And actually dollar cat is the, is the other one to be focusing on obviously with the cat employment, but the rest of them, I'm not really that enthusiastic about them. All right, guys, that may not be particularly helpful, but hopefully it keeps you out of trouble if you're thinking the same. All right, guys, have a good one. Cheerio.